So if you browse through Unix porn, you probably have seen displays of GNOME that look like the things that I'm showing you right now. And these have always flummoxed me because how do they do that? GNOME looks like GNOME and there's not much you can do to it. That's what we've all been told. That's what we've all thought. That's what's been true for literally ever. One of the hits against GNOME is that you can't make it look cool. You can't customize it. Well, it turns out that you can somehow because all of these people on Unix porn are doing it. So the question I had was, how do you do this? So I asked, and it turns out it's from a GNOME extension. So today we're going to be taking a look at a GNOME extension called Open Bar. Now, this isn't going to solve all of GNOME's customization problems. Absolutely not. The problems with GTK4 and theming still exist and will always exist as long as GNOME is GNOME. So we'll just have to bypass that. But we can actually customize that bar quite heavily using this plugins or this extension, I should say. So let's go ahead today and take a look at Open Bar. But before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, be really appreciative. It really helped the channel. So let's go ahead first and take a look at my personal usage of this extension. This is what my GNOME setup looks like. And you can tell that I'm using something funky with that bar because that bar is not the GNOME bar. It is the GNOME bar, but it's customized. So let's stop with the theatrics and then look at the actual extension. So like I said, the extension itself is called Open Bar, which is right here. The best way to install it obviously is with the GNOME extension manager. You just go here, search for Open Bar like so, and then you'd hit the install button and there you go. That's all you have to do. So that it will enable itself. I will say that upon ch making changes with this extension and installing this inst extension, GNOME tends to freeze up for a second. It doesn't take very long, and I'm, I wasn't too worried about anything, you know, like crashing or whatever, but I just wanted to point that out so that it did happen when I enabled this inst extension. So we'll go here and we'll go to settings. So, so all of this stuff can be done right from the settings. There's no configuration files. There's no dealing with CSS, none of that stuff. So when I first saw all of those things on Unix porn, I figured it was something to do with either decomp editor or a CSS file or something like that. But nay, nay, it all has to do with this GNOME extension here. So it does a ton of different stuff. So the first thing that it does is that if it's enabled, it will pull the color scheme from your background and refresh it every time you change the wallpaper. So if we actually go here and change the wallpaper, it should change the colors. Now, I don't know. Oh. There we go, and you can actually see it did in fact change the colors of the bar. It took a little minute. Now, that is one thing that you'll notice is that this does slow some things down. It doesn't slow the system down so much, but changing wallpapers is one of those things where it does take a second because it's going to change the wallpaper. It also will grab the color palette for the bar. So it does all of that. It will also allow you, obviously, to change the type of bar that you have. So in this case, I have selected islands. It allows you to have floating, which looks like this. It allows you to have trilands, which looks like this. And it allows you to have islands, which looks like this, which is what I had first. You can choose the position of the bar. You can choose to apply this theme to your notifications. You can change the bar height. So if I wanted to make it really big, I could do that. If I wanted to make it really small, I could do that. Obviously, there are limits to how it actually looks good. I think I was like in the, in the early 30s. Yeah, that looks good there. You can change the margins, all that sort of stuff. Basically, anything you can think of when it comes to customizing that top GNOME bar is capable of being done in Open Bar. It's awesome. You can change how the bar looks when a window is maximized, including the background color, the foreground color, the opacity, all of that stuff. You can also change what the bar height is when there's a maximized window. You, if you don't use the auto theming, if you turn auto theming off, you can change the bar foreground and background manually. So if you wanted to do a customized theme that already exists, so like Grovebox or One Dark or whatever, you could do that using these settings here. Same thing with the highlights. That's basically the, the 
color that goes around each of the islands or whatever so you can change that there it's the same thing with the border and the pop-up menus for gnome you can change the look and feel of the pop-up menus when you click on them so like this is normally black if you're using edweta this will actually change colors based on the theme that it's using in case I'm using in this case I'm using auto theming so it's changed it does the same thing for notification center as well so all that stuff is handled automatically by auto theming but you can go and delve deep into the settings and change all that stuff manually and there's more stuff here if you scroll down every single setting you can change to, to an, ex, an absurd amount. So things like changing the ra radius of the calendar, changing the menu pan panel radius, changing how opaque it is or whether it's opaque at all. All this stuff you can just manage down to the minute detail. And that's something that is very ungnome like You guys know this, right? Like you can't do this in regular GNOME. This works really, really well. It'll also control dash to dock. So if you want to apply your top bar colors to your... Uh, doc you can do that so this will this is what it looks like now I've just been using it the default theme but it works fine if you want to use it either way so it will if you use dash to dock or dash to panel I believe it will work with dash to panel as well I'm not sure about that but you can also change those settings here it will also and I haven't played around with this much because I don't know much about it but it will allow you to change this change it so that the accent color will be applied to GTK and Flatpak applications as well again just more customization for how this looks and feel overall like i said this is fantastic it allows you to do a ton of different stuff for customizing both that top bar and certain aspects of gnome and that broadens my interest in gnome to a much higher level way more than it ever has been before now does gnome still have its problems does it still have the Issues that I always talk about, most of them, yes, those are still here. But this makes GNOME much more palatable for me. And I think it will for a lot of people too. Now, this isn't going to be for everyone, but I do think if you are someone who likes to customize GNOME or customize the thing that you're using, Open Bar allows you to do that in such a my such a very specific way such a a, a deep way I, I don't know how to best to say it. it's like a, a comprehensive way that it changes the game it just really does a good job of making gnome feel more or feel less gnome i should say so i will just put in some caution here so first off this is a gnome extension and when gnome 43 or whatever the hell neck is next comes out there's a good chance this is going to break that's unfortunate, but it's probably going to be true. Now, maybe we'll get lucky and it won't break. I don't know. But GNOME extensions do have a tendency to break during a major update of GNOME. So just keep that in mind that it, when you update GNOME to the next version, this may break. Another thing to keep in mind is that because this is adding a whole bunch of visual effects to GNOME that it's not necessarily always going to use or you know by default it's not going to use you're going to see an, an uptick in resource usage now i didn't notice a ton it went up from about 600 megabytes for gnome shell to about 900 megabytes for gnome shell so it, you know it's very negligible but still keep that in mind if you're on a low-end system that this may cause you some issues when it comes to resource usage and also it it does take more resources when it's doing switches and themes and changing wallpapers and all that stuff than it would traditionally do so just kind of keep those things in mind and keep an eye on your resources if you are someone who needs to keep a look on their resources because you don't have that many so just kind of keep all that stuff in mind so that's it for this video if you have any thoughts on open bar you can leave those in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you you, you can follow me on mastodon that link will be in the video video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast there you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that i give out for all my patrons i also post the occasional video early though that doesn't happen very often but i do re post all of my blog posts early and you get to keep an access to the podcast live stream along with a whole bunch of other benefits so if you are interested in that stuff patreon.com slash linuxcast all the support that i get there and on youtube and ko-fi go directly towards helping me make more linux content for you guys so thank you so very much for all those of you who have done that i really do appreciate it. you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support 
If you too, again, would like to support me, patreon.com slash linuxcast, or you can head on over to the store if you'd like something actually physical in return for supporting me, you can head on over to the store that's shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, including hats, t-shirts, and all that sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that goes, again, to help me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for checking that out. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.